All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, into the markets here, first trading day of the year. Hope everybody had a good break here. And uh, yeah, let's get into it here. So markets um, are red today. Spiders down 40 basis points. Q's down just over 6 tenths of 1% here. Um, obviously, the big story of the day, Apple and Tesla really kind of weighing the market down right now. And um, we had that big gap up. It looks like the pension funds, um, kind of first of the month buyers here, got sold off into. Um, and now market's kind of recovering a little bit, but it feels like we're down 2% today. Um, this definitely has a very bearish feel to it today. Um, and again, it's, it's really Apple and Tesla just being the gut shot uh, to the market. Um, Tesla obviously missing on delivery numbers by like 5,000 cars. Um, and it's down, was down 15% at one point. I think 14 or 15% is down 12 and a half now. To me, this does not feel like a delivery number sell-off. Uh, it feels a lot more like um, either there's some type of insider selling again. Maybe Elon's just committing securities fraud one more time. Um, or um, somebody's buying a lot of puts for you know, whatever reason, or they want to push it lower to bag shorts. I don't know. There is a Fed Minutes tomorrow. Um, and I'm just saying this because it feels... Uh, like I, I'm checking my timeline. I don't see anybody bullish right now. Um, everybody's gotten really, I feel like a lot of people gotten stamped out of the market. Take a look at Apple. This And for good reason too. Take a look at Apple today. That's an ugly, ugly candle there, especially first of the month, first first day of the year. Um, taking out, I mean, new 52 week lows on Apple here. And obviously Tesla also um, just making barely 52 new 52 week lows here, but really dragging the market down. But uh, on the other hand, you know, this is why I say it's a little kind of, I'm a little suspect of it. A couple of reasons. One is, let's look at the spiders here. Volume's pretty dry. So we're at 64 million shares. Market closes in seven minutes. Um, that is very light volume for, con you know, considering how much the market is down. Considering Apple's down 4% or was down 4% at one point and Tesla's down 12, 13%, you'd think that we'd be doing at least 100 million shares on the spiders, but nowhere close to that. So that is a little bit of a, a, I guess a yellow flag for bears. Um, the other thing is that breadth today is positive and never went negative once today. So, I mean, if you look at, um, we'll look at the sectors in a minute, but, you know, look at XLF is green. Um, obviously, Tesla, Apple are down, but take a look at Meta. Meta decently in the green, up three and a half. Amazon up two and a half. Microsoft flat. And I believe Google, yeah, Google is up uh, 1% as well. So big tech, um, it, it I think I suggested this in one of the videos last week or the week before. I'm not sure. Maybe I suggested it to members or something. Um, but there is a chance we could see kind of like a, a turn taking, I guess. So we talked about rotation, right? From XLE to tech. We're seeing XLE down pretty nicely, down three and a half. Well, was down about 4% uh, at one point today. And I said that they would likely go into tech. Well, some tech stocks are up. Take a look at IGV. IGV is actually green up 25 basis points. Not crazy. Um, then you look at the S SMH. SMH is down. But you've got stocks like Intel and uh, Micron, which are up decently. Micron up almost 1% there. Um, with not a terrible look here intraday as well. It's near the highs. Um, so kind of a mixed bag. And then, you you know, like I said, you look at XLF, that's green. You know, Goldman is up. JP Morgan, I mean, this can still get to 140 pretty easily. I mean, this is not a terrible pullback pattern here for uh, JPM. So again, it's kind of a mixed bag, but it feels like we're down a lot more uh, because mainly just because of Apple and Tesla, it's really just a gut shot to the market here. And, you know, we are coming off the lows and it does look like kind of a possible like 380 pin here. Um, 3850, you can see there on the ES book map is kind of putting a ceiling in here as we get to the closing minutes. Um, as for tomorrow, yeah, your guess is good as mine. I mean, take a look at the volatility here. I mean, even just in the in the cash session, but take a look at overnight here. The big gap up sold all the way up back down to 3840. And then we took out the highs and then we came down and then we sold off pretty sharply. So lots of volatility here. First day of the trading year. Sometimes it can be tricky. January is always a tricky month in general. And then we do have the Fed minutes. So again, the Fed minutes are generally kind of a nothing burger, but 
Uh, we'll see. You know, if we're down big and ahead of it, maybe we rally. If we go up, maybe we'll sell off. Um, bottom line, you still have, you know, either way you look at it, we still have daily bearish consolidation technically, um, but it's still inside of the weekly. And the weekly, you know, is more dominant. And the weekly doesn't care what's going on on the daily. So we have a big power bar, green bar, pullback, two, two tail candles. And we're basically just stuck inside of that range. Um, and that's been defended a couple times and we have higher lows now. So I'm not saying we can't break down here, but this absolutely can happen. Um, you know, you are bear flagging um, and the, the lead general of the market is down <laughs> almost 4% here. So if this is down tomorrow and Microsoft is down and Google is down, um, the market's probably going to go down. So um, I would maintain more of a neutral stance in this kind of uh, environment here until we get more clarity. Could we still get the January effect? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, this could easily just be a one day ahead fake um, ahead of the Fed minutes. Again, light volume here. First day of the trading year, you get a holiday hangover. Um, those shortened trading weeks, often that oftentimes that Tuesday coming back is the case. Um, so we'll see what we get, but um, not the greatest showing here, all things considered. But again, the market is managing to come off the lows. And, you know, for what it's worth, like I said, you do have, I mean, it's, it's kind of uh, not the greatest, but you do have higher lows here on the hourly. And you can even make a case that um, if we go to the four hour, it's a little sloppy, but you could put in like an inverse head and shoulders there as well. So, um, and there's still some gaps up here to fill. So again, until proven otherwise, um, a little bit more neutral on this market here. By the way, the VIX, um, so the market gapped up today and the VIX gapped up about 6% and was up 8% at one point. So maybe that was a little bit of a, a tell that the market was going to fill the gap, but now the VIX coming in as well. So maybe the VIX comes down tomorrow. Again, uh, if your guess is as good as mine, usually I've got a pretty good answer for you guys, or at least a good hypothesis thesis going into the next day, the next week. But, um, this one's a tricky one in January is always a tricky month. Anyways, over to the queues. I still think that that 260 area is pretty good support. Um, again, Obviously, we are red today, basically hovering off the lows. We're getting a little bit of a bid here. Markets do close in about a minute and a half. Um, so we'll see what we get tomorrow. Nothing's really changed. Nothing, nothing really has diverged from the spiders. But I think that a lot of these stocks are oversold and at least due for some type of relief bounce here. Uh, Russell 2000 also lower. Again, went up into that 20 moving average. So that is kind of a bearish look there. It did make a higher high, but again, it doesn't really matter if you can't close above it. And, um, you know, it is below that 175 level. If we get back above 175, then things can change there. And then the Dow still leading. Again, Dow is actually green now, up one penny there on the diamond. Looks like maybe they're going to bid us up here in the final minute. But the Dow leading isn't a good sign. You want to see the NASDAQ and Russell, as we know. Anyways, over to the semis, like we mentioned earlier. They are red on the day. This is not a great look here, but still holding that 50% fib here. Again, it's just a really tough call here. I mean, this is a weak look here, but then you take a look at, you know, IGV, which is kind of, I call it the semi's cousin. You know, this is green. And the fact that it's green in a down market is a good sign um, for tech. And it, it, that's why I'm saying it's kind of a mixed bag here. We are seeing some rotation into some tech names, but it's just the big, big tech names like Apple, Tesla, that are really dragging things down right now. Anyways, uh, transports, they are hovering right around the flat line. So this was all over the map earlier. It was green, then it was red. Now it's powering back up. Um, you know, not a great pattern here. Again, we do think based on that close last week, this is a failed pattern here, but the transports generally lead by a couple of weeks. So it's usually not right away that you see, um, you know, if the transports are weak, that the market becomes weak. Usually it is something that plays out a few weeks in advance. And as there's the closing bell, Dow closing down just three basis points. So they just managed to close that negative. But anyways, um, we're keeping the transports on watch there. We'll see if this can push up and maybe get some type of relief. Anyways, over to interest rates, TNX. So much lower here, but it did come off the low. So down 2.22% for the day. Um, I still don't think this has quite satisfied the upside. I, I'm still looking for the TYX, the 30 year, to get up to about 40, 40, 40, 50. So right in that area, that pivot, that's where I think it wants to go. Uh, rates did start the day out pretty strong. Um, and obviously they did come off the highs pretty sharply, but I still think they need to go up and get to that 40, 50 area um, before they can come back in. But they did come nicely off the lows there. Um, TNX down just 2%. Uh, and then the two year, this is not a good look here. I mean, it is. it did close green. 
about intraday, um, you know, it went up to that yellow line again. And what's the significance of that yellow line? That's that green bar that failed, right? So we basically went up there and back tested it and then we sold off. So not a good look here for the two year. Again, this can be a leading indicator as well. But again, it's like the transports. It's not always a right away type thing. Um, usually it takes a week or two to play out. Um, so again, the rates did come in a little bit here, but uh, I still think they have one more little push, at least on the 30 year. Anyways, over to Home Builders, XHB holding up again all day long, up 1.34%. ITB, same thing here. Um, they're holding up pretty well. And again, this is a sector that's been outperforming, uh, really didn't even go red at once one time today. So home builders holding up really well. And again, just kind of goes back into the mixed bag that I was talking about. Some sectors are up, some sectors are down, but breadth is still overall positive. So again, I'm <laughs> very neutral going into tomorrow. Um, we'll see what we get. Anyways, VNQ up, oh man, managed to scratch out a gain. So up 10 basis points there. Yeah, it looks like it just went positive there in the last 10 minutes. So um, again, not a great pattern, down move, inside bar. So not a great look here. I do not like real estate, as you guys know, um, but we'll give her the benefit of the doubt for now. It was up in a down tape. Uh, XLF, same thing. Um, again, not a great pattern, but up in a down tape. You know, I can't take that away. Uh, I will be shorting the financials this year again. Um, XBD, same thing, bearish inside bar there. You know, maybe it wants to go up and test 460, but I do not like this pattern here. Uh, for XBD. Over to energy. So crude backed off quite a bit today, down 4%, just under 4% rather. And again, that's why we're just kind of neutral on crude. I never saw a clear cut bottom there. We came up, we tried to flag and we got rejected pretty good on pretty good volume today too. So we'll see if it can make one more low. Um, again, it still has some work to do. This isn't this pattern isn't broken, but that is an engulfing reversal there on the daily. So it does look like it wants some more downside, possibly into the 7250 to 73 range there. That should be a short term support for crude. If it gets through that, then it's down to the mid 60s. Uh, XLE, which we mentioned earlier, pretty good sell off today, but you know, it is still potentially putting in higher lows. You held that 100 moving average. So it's holding up again. It's resilient. It's a strong sector. It takes a lot to take, you know, the strong sectors down. Uh, but again, it was lower and it was lower than a lot of other sectors were today. So just keep that in mind. XOP down 5.5%. So breaking this kind of inside bar pattern here. So we talked about this bearish channel, down move inside breakdown, and um, you know, back into this trend line again, we'll see if it can hold up there uh, tomorrow. Uh, OIH, same thing. So it tried to break out on Friday, no confirmation today, and pretty good clear cut rejection down four and three quarters percent on the day. And again, it's, it, if you looked at the, if you looked at the just, if you didn't look at energy today and you just looked at you, how the market performed, you'd be like, oh, tech got slaughtered. Tech, it was tech breaking the whole market down. It was really energy. I think energy led to the downside today. Um, again, like outside of Apple and Tesla, tech wasn't terrible, you know? So um, again, we still could see that kind of rotation here. So I'm not um, not necessarily giving up on that trade, but you know, today was a little bit of a, again, a mixed bag. Anyways, net gas down, touching the $4 handle. This might want to go to 375. I'd say there's really good support for their, uh, for net gas there. It's also down like 50% in the last two weeks. So I think this is due for a bounce probably up to that $5 handle at the very least, but net gas down 10% today. Um, it does look a little contrived here too. Take, by the way, take a look at the four hour. Um, just look at the RSI here. This is this is a, a pretty good divergence if I've ever seen one there on that uh, uh, four hour RSI for net gas, but again, um, things can remain oversold longer than you think. So just be aware of that. Uh, dollar index did manage to get a bid. So it couldn't, couldn't, just couldn't roll over today. Um, we tried to break those lows on Friday. Didn't get there. Nice outside candle for the dollar. Um, again, yields did recover here. I'm not convinced this is put in a low. Um, it had a nice day. We'll leave it at that for now. It is defending. They are basically defending that 50-week moving average for now. Um, again, it's the first trading day of the year. Lots of things get mixed up. Let's not make too much out of it. By the way, gold was also green today. Um, and that's with, I mean, yes, the, the 30 year was, the 30 year note was green. So ZB was green, um, but the dollar was up pretty nicely. And so gold hanging in there, I do think it wants to go to 1875. Um, that's about it though, for now. But, you know, we'll give gold the upside bias. It was holding, it, it did hold up there with the, with the strong dollar today. 
So again, we'll give it the upside bias, but I'm not convinced that this is necessarily a low on the dollar. I could be wrong. We'll see though. Uh, silver here, I just got up to that. It didn't quite get to this trend line. I mean, you could possibly, um, you know, I mean, at this point, that probably is a rejection there. We could probably, you know, cheat and like alter that. But, you know, sometimes that's what you have to do with trend lines. You know, if you go to wherever the market is um, respecting it, and we basically touched that with volume today. So that might even be a top there on silver. Um, we'll have to see follow through to the downside. And you got to take out, you got to take out these pivots and then this green bar here. But a pretty good uh, sell there on silver with that trend line there. So we'll see how that behaves. Um, but yeah, nice little dump there on SI futures. Also, copper was down. Um, quite a bit today too. Nice little outside candle down, did fill that gap there. I think it actually filled it on Friday. So yeah, a little bit of a minor gap there, nothing crazy, um, but heavy volume there as well. So keep that on radar. I will say though that copper here on the weekly, yes, we have that red bar high and this is still bearish chop until proven otherwise, but you have a bullish inside bar inside of that. So if this hangs around in this upper area, this can push through. So be, um, just keep that on your radar there with copper. Um, but, you know, it did back off quite a bit today. Platinum, of course, it was higher uh, <laughs> because I didn't buy the trend line. But I know some of you guys did, so that's good. I'm, that's, that's good. I'm glad people got in on that. But up to 1100 right now, coming into a lot of resistance. If you do own this trail, your stop, don't let it get back below 1050. Uh, but nice move there for PL futures and then Bitcoin here. Um, actually green today. So again, another... Um, kind of like, I mean, I know Bitcoin marches at the beat of its own drum these days, but um, another kind of addition to like the mixed bag, so to say, futures were green. Um, they did back off the highs with everything else, but you know, it's not a terrible hourly, you know, kind of, a, you know, came down here, pulled back. If you can get above this red bar high, you can go back up to 16.7. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt for now. Maybe Bitcoin's a little bit of a leading indicator going into tomorrow. Maybe, maybe not. It does tend to do its own thing. Anyways, back over to the spiders. Um, yeah, I really stress neutrality right now. It We do have, a, like I said, a nice bearish pattern here on the daily. The weekly still isn't broken though, and we gotta be careful with that. Um, also, like I said, breadth was pretty decent today and volume was light. So we're eight minutes past the close and we have under 71 million shares traded on the spiders. So that's less than Friday. Um, so you know, just take that with a grain of salt here. Nice sell off. Um, Apple, Tesla getting beaten down hard. Um, lots of bear sentiment out there. We do have the Fed minutes tomorrow, so be on your toes here. Anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on HanoverTrades.com. Talk to you all tomorrow.